Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ancient Warfare Podcast. Uh, my name is Jasper Ortiz and I'm the editor of Ancient Warfare Magazine. And with me tonight are Mark DeSantis and Murray Dam, who uh, is the assistant editor of Ancient Warfare, and both of which you are very used to. And we have a guest today as well, and that is Mark Beerman. So to make um, our lives more easy, we have two Marks as usual. Uh, we can't even distinguish them now by asking for Mark C or Mark K with a K. <laughs> but I guess in this case, our guest Mark will have to uh, just assume that all questions are directed him at him. Uh, you might not recognize his name, but you um, you may subscribe to his YouTube channel, which is Imperium Romanum. He's a channel with um, saying about forty six thousand subscribers, which is a pretty good start because I don't think you've been at it for a very long time, and there's not a ton of videos. Usually, you see people having to put out dozens and dozens of videos before they get anywhere but you seem to have taken off very quickly it's a channel that does a uh, you know uh, as the name suggests a lot of roman history with a lot of high quality uh, reenactment in it uh, which uh, we thought might appeal to our listeners and, and and worth a chat so welcome mark thank you very happy to be here um, can you tell me maybe to start off, how did it come about? Did you just decide, oh, you know, we got some iPhone cameras here and uh, we're at a reenactment event. Let's go record something. I wish it was that easy. Uh, no, it was uh, a friend of mine, the other guy that presents a lot of the video floors. Uh, I've known him for like 30 years since, since kindergarten. And we've always been into history and I'm, you know, like this, uh, enthusiastic guys so, oh we should go into reenactment and we should we should do stuff with roman history and he was like nah, i don't know the two of us what are we gonna do and then i was like yeah he's probably right so it just nothing really happened and then i met uh, alan the guy with the big beard uh, at my work and i found out pretty soon that he was a huge nerd just like me but i had one problem he was into vikings so um, i brainwashed him into roman basically and then he oh, was well, you'll have to tell us how you do that yeah, well, just keep talking <laughs> about him. He, I saw him like pretty much every day at work. So I said like, hey, man, uh, he thought that the Romans, he had this stereotyp stereotypical view of Romans, like, you know, uh, bathing all day and drinking wine. And uh, and the Vikings were all masculine, tough guys. So I was like, no, no, no. Well, look, 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 they can, be, they can be tough guys as well. And then he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we became good friends. And then after a while, he was like, uh, he actually said like, shouldn't we do something like, like, I don't know, dress up? And then I was like, well, what a nice idea. So then we again contacted Flores, like you're still in for it. And we were like, and he was like, yeah, sure. Why not? We just give it a shot and we'll see. We'll start an Instagram, see how it goes. And we'll just go out into the woods in authentic gear and march a bit, make some photos and, you know, have a weekend with a few beers and we'll see how it ends. And then our in Instagram like sort of exploded really fast especially for an instagram that is focused on ancient history um we were up to like 2000 followers in a year and uh, a guy contacted us that worked for invicta and he said like what i saw and we did uh, auxiliaries by the way we did uh, um, uh, uh i don't know exactly how to say this tribe in english but the kanana fates i think yeah, the Kalinifates, yeah. Yeah. So, so the, we, the Western Dutch tribe. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly where we live. So we thought that was original because everybody does legionary reenactment and we wanted to do something different. So Invicta told us, like, we, I want to make a video uh, with the main focus point being auxiliary units. And you guys look really cool. So do you guys want to help me? And we were like, are you serious? Yeah, of course, dude. I mean, we... We're like, we only have one Instagram account. We've only been here for like a year. And you ask us, yeah, dude, we're going to help you. So our first YouTube experience basically was filming for uh, Invicta for Julian in the in the Ardennes. And it was, uh, in hindsight, <laughs> it was so stupid because we had no idea what we were doing. Uh, Floris worked as a photographer and he would just take his, his camera and we would, uh, okay, what should we do? Something like packing gear? Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay. Bloop. And Alain would pack his gear and then we would say, okay, what's next? Um, cooking dinner? Yeah, sure. And we would cook dinner. And 
And when we when we had all the footage delivered to Invicta, he was like really enthusiastic and he said, Oh, this looks great, it looks so authentic. And then we were like, Well, why just not start our own YouTube channel? I mean, if it's it's apparently good enough for him, we can do it ourselves as well. And so it started the idea of of becoming of 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 starting our own YouTube channel. And uh, long story short, here we are. Wow. So you didn't you started your own reenactment group in uh, in, in as a part of this whole thing, despite the fact that there are at least three, four, how many are there in this country? Four or five, maybe? Yeah, four or five, something like that. Yeah. But the problem was we didn't want to be dependent on other people in terms of equipment or opinions or uh, the way they wanted to go with their group. You know, we just wanted to do our own thing. So we just decided, you know, there's the three of us and we'll see where it ends. And and how did it go from there? I mean, you just recorded video and then no, it was it's a long process. We we really had to think like how are we going to make ourselves special because you know our our main weapon, so to speak, is that we do exactly what those people did, or at least we try to, and that's what not a lot of YouTube channels are doing, or at least you know most people do everything with artwork, but we actually have the stuff and show people the stuff and that was our, our our secret basically so we wanted to um make something special so we had to figure out okay so how is a video from imperial manum going to look um are we going to just talk into the camera and tell a story are we going to uh, mix it with artwork what are the stories going to be they need to be original we don't want to chew out the same stuff that other channels already have so uh, Flores is um, is the one who writes the episodes, which takes approximately about six weeks for one episode to write it all uh, to write it all up. Um, and then you know we just sit together and we we look at at what we have. We plan a weekend. Uh, going into camera gear was a lot of work. What camera is best suited for our uh, for our type of filming? What software do we use to edit it? I, I think it took us about two years before we had our first three videos. And that was the Batavian one, the Auxilia versus Legionary one, and the one that we actually shot in Rome itself. And it took us about two years to make so three episodes um, and that we thought at some point, all right, this is gonna be it. And this is the quality uh, that we always want to achieve. How do you negotiate around the we don't know? Um issue of of reenactment uh exactly that <laughs> <laughs> right well, perfect uh, we we just yeah, yeah you know it's, uh, this, it's funny that you say that because we had a um a filming day last sunday about the the fourth century uh warfare in the fourth century um and we simply say at the video it might be this it might be that but to be honest we just don't know and we we don't want to you know you have some youtube channels that just say it was like this or it was like that, but we don't want to go that way because so many things is just unknown. So we do a suggestion what we think might be possible, but we're not saying that is the way it was. The uh, legionary had a gladius, a short sword, uh, the pilum, heavy throwing javelin, and the scutum, whereas the auxiliary had the uh, smaller oval shield, a short spear, and a longer sword. Uh, why do you think the Romans had that kind of uh, different arms for their soldiers? And uh, did you ever come up with a, a preference for either or? What would you rather fight with if you had the uh, need? Well, I think it is all in a way of um, a different style in fighting. I mean, just like with modern armies, you have different groups of soldiers that have different ways of operating. Uh, you have like uh, armored infantry, uh, you have parachute uh, regiments. And I think in antiquity, it wasn't much different. Uh, different troops had a different role. Uh, so I think the auxiliary troops, first of all, they were recruited mainly from tribes that were already used to fighting with longer swords. So I think it's rather logic that the Romans, pragmatic as they were, just thought, well, if that's what you're used to, you know, we're not, you know, we're going to change a few things so that you can fit in our army but if this is what you're used to we're, we're fine um and for me personally i've worn both pretty pretty often uh, and i do think i prefer the legionary outfit because the big rounded curved shield or the big curved shield uh offers 
excellent protection and the, sh the, the combination of the curved shield and the so sword, uh, short sword is just brilliant in my opinion. So if, if, I if I was being given a choice, like you got to choose right now, I would choose the legionary fighting style. But it all depends on the situation, of course. Maybe in some situations I would prefer uh, the auxilia equipment, but... Well, it's interesting because when you look at, um, uh, I know it's controversial because it's a, t it's a, you know, it's a column. But when you look at uh, Marcus Marcus Aurelius's column, they've got curved oval shields, um, and then you have the issue that did they move to curved oval shields, and then they show a testudo on that. And nope, nope, they're curved rectangular shields there. And then the only shield to survive from Dura Europus is indeed a curved rectangular shield from the following century. And you're like, yeah, but you've got Marcus Aurelius's column where. Everyone's got a curved oval shield, not just Praetorians, everybody. And you're like, was that a thing? And you're like, we don't know. We're not sure. Maybe choose choose one or the other uh, for what suits you best. And then, of course, by the fourth century, you've got uh, round and oval shields, flat round and oval shields, um, slightly dished. But, um, you know, I mean, that's something else. You know, what degree of dishing uh, do you do? You What degree of curvature uh, do you go for? It's so difficult, especially shields, because, you know, like you just said, how many shields were found, like, in total from antiquity? I, I don't maybe 10 in total? Uh, well, all of antiquity or just ancient Roman? Yeah, well, uh, ancient Roman uh, period. Like, Well, I mean, there's, from Dario Europas, there are more fragments, I think, and various shield boards. Um, there's some Germanic ones. Uh, bits and shield board, I think. I mean, yeah, complete scooter. There's exactly two, I think, first century BC and third century AD. So, do do you make your do you make your own gear that is shown in the video, or is that a combination of stuff that you bought and uh, made yourself, or how does that work? Yeah, well, clothing is uh, the area of expertise of uh, Alain the guy with the beard, he makes pretty much all of our clothing and he is starting to become an expert on uh, on clothing by now, which is uh, really nice. So when I want a nice fleshy pair of pants, uh, I tell him, can you make me one? And then sometimes he says, no, I'm way too busy. But most of the time he says, yeah, sure. So when we need like um, last episode, we, we uh, talked about the Torsberg uh, trousers and uh, he made one, which turned out really nice. So it's really really nice to have somebody who is skilled with clothing and also he makes our military belts but for like the real difficult stuff like swords scabbards uh, uh daggers uh, we have a blacksmith um robert wimmers um and uh, um, i don't know if you know him uh, simon he's from pax romana who's also a very good blacksmith um but and stuff like helmets it's just so difficult and we we can't make that ourselves we just order them from some uh, specialist guys but there are limits obviously i mean what what would you like to do but you know it's just outside of your reach because do you i mean do you still work with just the three of you or do you now work with other reenactment groups so you can present larger scenes or um and obviously surroundings play a role because it's kind of hard to find ancient looking areas here in the netherlands anyway yeah for sure well, we have gained some popularity with our first three videos where we just were the three of us and some people that we knew. So we just, on Facebook, we were asking people like, hey, would you like to hang out with us and, and make a uh, make a documentary with us? And the reenactors, the, the real hardcore reenactors, which does not include me, uh, they're like hardcore, whether it's minus 10, they don't care. They, they show up, you know. So uh, we asked them, would you like to help us? And then we'll make sure you have enough to eat and drink. And they're like, yeah. So now we have this app group of all kinds of reenactors from all groups of the Netherlands. And when we when we say, you know, this weekend we're going to film, I see the apps like pop, 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 pop of everybody saying, yeah, we're coming. Um, so we the biggest group of soldiers we've had so far was like 22-ish, which is pretty good. So, yeah, we have a lot of enthusiastic people who are really willing to help us. Um, so, in that, yeah, we, we, we are not worried about having uh, not enough people. And in terms of location, uh, we're really lucky that I don't know if you ever guys ever heard of uh, Museum Park Orientalis in Nijmegen, which is um, yeah, sort of a theme park um, with 
an ancient Roman street, or at least reconstructed, obviously, and some other locations which are really good for filming. And yeah, we basically say, hey, can we film that weekend? And then they say, yeah, sure, why not? And we just give them footage that they can use for their museum, which normally costs them a lot of money. Um, and in return for those um, videos, we can stay at the park for a weekend for free. But that, that would, I mean, I, I'm familiar with that park. It's, it's um, it, it, for everyone else, it, it was founded in the early 20th century as a, um, originally it was called the Biblical Open Air Museum, uh, you know, the, the Holy Land away from home or at home, really, um, uh, based on travels of uh, missionaries who, who who went to the Holy Land. And they basically copied things from that time and added some more, slightly more accurate stuff uh, in the uh, yeah, in in period since, among among which is the is the Roman street, which looks pretty good, but it's only a single street. Like you don't have a Roman fortress or even a frontier fortification. I mean, like like was built in Nijmegen no, for a, a weekend fifteen years ago. I mean, stuff like that. I'm sure is on your list to do, but that's just. I guess you you're going to need a, a giant budget to pull that off. Yeah. <laughs> do you have do you have uh, much like location scouting to go? We got to go and film something. You know, trip away to Hadrian's Wall, film on Hadrian's Wall, or or Zanton, or somewhere else. I mean, one of the advantages, of course, you get this bit of bush here. This is the Tudorborg of Wald, but it's it's nowhere near the Tudorborg of Wald. Yes, but it's a bit of bush here with, <laughs> with, with some trees you know and then you'll then you'll get the uh historical reenactment botanists who'll be like well that breed of tree that didn't exist <laughs> oh yeah oh it's funny that you say that because we had this filming weekend at a, a reconstructed germanic farm and it had some sort of flower growing there i i don't know and it was one comment that said oh this was one of the best videos i've ever watched on youtube but what is that flower doing there shame on you guys and we we're like dude I have no idea where you're, what you're talking about. So no, no scouting locations is definitely a thing because we don't want to wear out our locations too much. Um, but again, it's really difficult because a lot like Xanthan, they charge like $1,000 a day, no matter if we are a small YouTube channel or a big budget film studio. So that's, you know, out of the question. Uh, but it, it surprises me how much locations are actually quite willing to receive us. Um, so that, that's a positive, uh, that's something really positive, but in the end, you are quite limited to a few locations that you try to use as best as you can. But again, it's, it's pretty difficult, it's especially bigger fortifications. Uh, that's really difficult. We have a watchtower that is completely, um, installed with authentic, uh, you know, like beds and everything that we can use, which is pretty nice, but we are looking for like indeed a big fortress or something really epic. But first of all, <laughs> it's not really existent. Uh, and second of all, the ones that are there are really difficult to to film there for, you know, no money, basically, because we have no real budget. How uh, fatiguing is wearing all of the armor and and the gear the, the, the between the shield, the helmet, the armor, everything that you have with you as you move around? Does it become, oh, this is annoying, I need a rest, or or is it uh, distributed fairly evenly and you could go for a long period of time? Uh, well, of course, it depends on how physically fit you are in the first place. But for me personally, we the longest thing we've done, I think, was like 12 kilometers, where we were wearing in total, I think, 15 to 20 kilos. If you just take a rest with your furka, which is pretty long, you just can just put it in the ground, basically. And you just rest for five minutes after a few miles. No, it's it's pretty doable. Yeah. And so I think if you train a bit, I, I have never felt like really cumbersome or really tired really fast with that gear. I mean, taking a Wii with the military belt is a nightmare. Uh, but besides that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> good to know. This is the kind of stuff. Uh, that's the kind of stuff you figure out when you wear that stuff. You know, like you got to take a pit. Yeah, and you're like, see? oh man, this just doesn't work. No literary source mentions that. No, oh, exactly. Interesting. <laughs> I was I was wondering if there are any plans to reenact uh, actual events in terms of the march time. So, for instance, the 
the the revolt of the Batavi, the the marching between camps, like to actually uh, achieve, if you, or, or one of Caesar's speed marches, you know, that can you envisage that we've got to get from here to here, you know, bridge the Rhine in eighteen days, go. Um, so, <laughs> uh, you know, that kind Stop of traffic for eighteen days on the Rhine, That'd yeah, be fun. yeah. <laughs> you know, that kind of idea of of taking a a known historical event with a particular speed and time in time in terms of March and then film a documentary about, you know, here we are on day five and everybody's falling because they can't keep up the pace or, you know, we're not fit enough or. Uh... Yeah. We definitely are planning on something like that, at least to, to have a, a March at its, like the 25 kilometers that they on average would have marched. Um, but the problem is that we need good weather because I'm not going to, because, we, you know, well, we need good weather in terms of we want to do it in summer because we want to uh, sleep in tents as well. You know, we want to do we want to do it really good. So like three days sleep in tents. Um, but to organize, you know, that kind of thing is it's so much work. Who has an authentic, completely leather tent? It's like one guy. Does that guy feel like helping us? You know, so we are definitely planning something like that. But also. I don't think we should forget that people from that period were just, especially in comparison to now, were just extremely fit. I mean, there were no cars, there were no, 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 no staircases that would just go automatically. You know, people were so much more fit. Than, <laughs> yeah, so much more fit yeah. than we are today. So I think we would actually need to train for such an event because if you're going to walk for five days, 25 kilometers a day, with 30 kilos of equipment. I don't know, man. That's that's pretty hard. Yeah, you're not you're not going to do that cold. No, that's true. no, exactly. So we are planning such a thing because it's really cool, you know, and it's and that will make you feel like the way it was for sure. Um, but because it's such a difficult thing, because like you said, I need to train like three weeks in, at least now, three like six weeks in advance, and walking through the neighborhood in full Roman gear. <laughs> I, you know, that's what I'm. That's what I got to well, do. Then, yeah. And then, and then you've got to build up to the yeah, and now fight a battle at the end of it. You're like, oh, oh exactly. I need, exactly. I need a rest. Yeah. <laughs> do you, uh, you have a favorite piece of Roman gear, or is there one piece of gear that especially impresses you, uh, for whatever reason? Um, yeah, I think my favorite piece of gear is the belt, because the way, first of all, the way it was constructed. And the way it looked in some cases, of course, some were really plain and simple, but some of them were like really elaborate. Yeah, definitely the, the belt, although impractical as hell, uh, is, is one of my favorite items because it looks really nice. It sounds really nice. You know, when you hear the, the, the clinging of the, the little metal objects, uh, you know that there's, there's a legionnaire or at least a, a Roman soldier coming, you know, those sounds. It's definitely my most favorite object, yeah. Do, do you have any idea who watches your videos? Or is it just, you know, people like the Ancient Warfare podcast readership? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> uh, yeah, they are. I think it's a pretty, well, Americans, a lot of Americans, 30% of all our viewers are from the United States. Uh, they just love European history, I think. Um, and... Yeah, people who just enjoy history. You have these these hardcore ancient history people that you know, like the flower guy. You know those kinds uh, of people. <laughs> oh, he's no. I think he's 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 a step beyond. You know. <laughs> yeah, um... maybe. Yeah, he, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we have just just people who are generally interested in history, and you know they are on YouTube and they say, "Oh, Romans, let's watch a video about Romans." So it, it's it's a it's a mix, but. If I read the comments, there are a lot of people who are really orientated on Roman history, which is really nice. And what they say is also really cool that they're like, oh, you guys are the only ones that actually show more or less, of course, the way it was. Um, and that's the compliment that I'm basically looking for, because that's what makes us special. And you can draw an image of a Roman soldier, but it doesn't come as close as to the actual Roman soldier. Uh, we can have a whole separate podcast about that one, I think. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe another time. Do they pitch on, uh, topics at you? I mean, or oh, how, yeah. how do you get to new, new topics? Is it just, you know, your audience or is it just you sit you sit down and three of you have a beer and ideas roll out? Yeah, well, the last thing for sure. And sometimes, you know, I just read a book about something or ancient warfare is actually 
uh, the inspiration of one of our, I think, most exciting episodes for the new season. So yeah, Ancient Warfare, definitely. Um, but also, you know, when when, it, when we were in Rome uh, last year, I walked ne- to the um, I walked besides the Temple of Mars Uther, and I was like, of all these people walking by, who has any idea what they're looking at? You know, at the Forum Romanum, they know, you know, the uh, you know the Republican Forum, which is the hotspot of of Rome. Everybody knows more or less what they're looking at. But a temple like Mars Uther, which is a bit secluded, no one really knows. So let's make a video about that, you know, and then comes the idea. Um, and also people who comment like, can you do the Dacian Wars? And then I'm like, yeah, sure, start off easy. But uh, <laughs> uh, but definitely people in the comments are an inspiration for us. And uh, we, we read all comments. Um, so the Dacian Wars are definitely on our list for everyone le- listening. But it will be one of our biggest projects. And when we do it, we also will be doing it in Romania. So um, that's going to be a big one. So that's more or less how we get topic. But will it be Domitian's campaigns or Trajan's or? Uh, well, and and will you about... use Murray, who writ- wrote several articles about it, as your historical advisor? Yeah. Well, <laughs> Murray, here's the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a pity I'm in Australia, but uh, well, I'll always welcome uh, Romania. I've got, uh, well, Alice would be happy. Um, but uh, yes. So I, it's really interesting because the, I think, I mean, maybe controversial. I think Trajan copies out of Domitian's book, but because Domitian is Damnatio Memoriae, he doesn't have to credit his source. So it's like, well, why did you go there? Oh, you followed what Domitian did. Oh, why'd you build that? Oh, because you followed Domitian. Oh, interesting. Anyway, um, not to mention, I'm sorry, I'm going to geek out now. Uh, the leading general of Trajan's campaign was Frontinus's son-in-law, Senecio, uh, and Frontinus was probably one of the concilium during the Dacian Wars. So it's like, ah, oh, it's all connected. All connected. It's one big conspiracy. It is, absolutely. Very, <laughs> very obscure ancient history conspiracy <laughs> theories that only I subscribe to. That's right. <laughs> is that is that got a physical date attached or just a nebulous no, in the future? Well, the first real historical location that we're going to visit um, is going to be uh, Germany, actually. We're going to make a six part uh, documentary about um, the Romans in Germany and the lowlands. And then we're going to visit multiple locations, uh, including uh, the Teutonberg uh, forest, of course. Uh, so that's going to be, we first going to work that one out and then we see how that gets, uh, how people like, if people like it or not. And then uh, maybe there will be a same kind of thing for uh, Trajan's wars. But like I said, it's going to be such a huge project and this is not our job, you know. We just we have full time jobs. I have small children, so <laughs> yeah. So are, are they are they interested? Well, my daughter is two and a half. No, well, so so she doesn't she doesn't get a choice. Uh, she could no, be a exactly. two, <laughs> no, two and a half year old. Yeah, yeah. She thinks she thinks that Flores built a Colosseum <laughs> uh, because when we were in Rome, we 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 drove by the Colosseum and I said, "Look, uh, what's that?" And then she actually said, "Romeine," which is the Dutch word for Romans. And I was like, oh, "I'm so proud." And then yeah, absolutely, said, Flores built that. And I'm like, mm, not really, but <laughs> you're giving. Yeah, me I'll take credit. it. I'll take it, yeah. So she, uh, <laughs> she thinks, yeah, because she's two and a half, so everything is interesting. What I think, you know, when I say something interesting, she thinks it's interesting. So that's pretty funny. But, um, but like I said, you know, it's not our job. YouTube is not our job. Um, so it's it, it consumes so much time. It's about one hundred and fifty hours for one video of work, and that besides a full time job and you know family um, for all of us. So a lot of people ask us like why don't you crank out a a video every two weeks they were like yeah (laughs) you have no idea (laughs) yeah yeah have you have you tried scheduling anything with a friend it's like oh coordination so but you 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 mentioned season uh, sorry you uh, is season coming out do you sort of plan it as a season like we release five or ten or twelve episodes and then we'll just you know, then we'll stop and we'll prepare another series or yeah. is that how it works? Um, well, or is it when they're done when they're done? <laughs> uh, well, we, we, will, we really weren't going. Our first season, so to speak, was, I think, now like nine episodes. 
And when we started our channel, when we launched our channel, we had six ready and three were still in progress. Uh, and we had to plan like we're going to post every four weeks on Friday at 19 or 100 hours. That's going to be the plan. But then we figured out like it takes so much time to make a video once at one every four weeks is just not doable it's just not possible so for the next season we're not going i will i was sometimes working until two o'clock at night while i had to get up at six the next morning because the video had to get done that day uh and we said like we don't want to do that anymore we're not going to pin ourselves to a certain date we're just going to post and then we'll see when we post again it might be two weeks it might be four weeks it might be six, six weeks but you know, it's on this. It's not our job, so it still needs to remain fun. You know, um, and that's really important. So we we don't want to stress about it, which inevitably always happens. You always stress about it a bit. But um, so like a season, yeah, we are we are looking at it at the season. Um, but now our our um, supply of videos will be quite higher than we had previous season. Um, but, you know, we're like, we'll see where it ends. We're just going to post every every now and then. Um, and once we're out of videos, we'll have a pause again, probably. We'll see. What's the, what's the most difficult thing about making these videos that you never expected when you started on it? Camera gear. Um, <laughs> technical stuff. Such a pain. <laughs> he said with a, <laughs> yeah, with. Yeah, you know, voice. there's always something it's it's like when we when we just finished a weekend of filming and we're all like hyped up like oh yeah we did so great and then you find out there was this really small spot on the lens of your camera that you don't see on your screen even we also have a like a bigger screen you you just don't see it and we're like oh okay that was 48 hours and a lot of planning that just went to the garbage bin while you know like like the half of it was unusable or we have so much i dropped um i dropped an um external hard drive once without making a backup uh, which i always do except that one weekend you know uh of course it's all these technical stuff or i'm telling a story like and then we i put my headset on and then i only hear like nothing so, oh yeah, the mic wasn't on. You know, those kind of, of stupid things. Is The camera gear is always a pain. And we're doing this now for two years and we've become pretty professional, but still. And now I understand, first, I never understood why a cameraman needed like five assistants. You know, when you when you watch the movie, you see like first assistant, second assistant. And I was like, why five, dude? Do you <laughs> drink off every day and you tell everyone to get, but now I get it because... You know, they're just checking that everything is all right and then you can go and we have to do this for ourselves. So yeah, camera gear is definitely the biggest pain for sure. I think one of the other problems, of course, is that when you go into an, a production, they've got the people who are experts in, you know, the camera gear, the sound gear, the 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 props department, the costume department, the makeup department, and you're all those things. So it's like, uh, you know, and the problem is that all of those things on a film set can take place around one another. So while the sound guys up are setting up your and makeup and costume, then you go to props and then, you know, all the, the production and, and catering, catering, very important. Um, whereas you guys are in charge of all of it. So it can't happen at the same time. You've got to do bit by bit by bit by bit. So that, you know, just adds. And of course, wearing all those hats, there's going to be something that, you know, when your makeup person is worried about your eyelashes, you can't have that worry when you've got all the other things to sort of put on the top so that just compounds all the issues i think you just hit it exactly the way it is it's <laughs> i mean I, also catering is really funny because you know when 20 guys are coming you need to have 20 you know you know 20 guys are going to drink a beer and they're not going to drink one beer you know they want and you want to take good care of them because you know they're not getting paid to stand in minus five uh, on a field in there without trousers on uh, because, you know, for the film, it's summer. So, um, you know, you need to take care of them really well and you want to do that. So after a whole day of shooting, I'm like baking burgers, making sure everyone has a beer and yeah. And the cold is also one of the things that is just never, I know people back in ancient times weren't cold, but when I'm on film, I don't want to look like 
like this with 40 tunics on, you know? So a lot of times you're like shaking and then you're on set and then you're like, okay. <clears throat> and then you talk and you, you say what you need to say. And after that, you're like, oh man, it's so freaking cold. Because you don't want to look like you don't want to look like you know. So, so, so sh should we be putting out a call for people who want to just help with that kind of stuff? Um, should they just contact you on your on your YouTube channel and say, "I want to be I want to be your catering assistant oh, for, that would for be free"? Awesome. Or your yeah. I don't know, we'll, best we'll... boy. What are they all called? Yeah, 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 absolutely. The grip. Oh yeah, we'll, oh, we'll yeah, here. yeah. yeah. Yep, the dolly, the like the hooey, the watsy. Uh, yeah, that's funny. Oh, that would uh, be so great. What... Yeah, that takes well, out. So have, much you, ha, have, have you thought about uh, green screen, green screen CGI skins for for some sets and scenarios? Oh sure, uh, but again, money, <laughs> money is an issue because a lot of people think that when you have a YouTube channel that is running pretty well, like ours, that you know, you can buy a new car every day, but that's just so far from the truth because uh, YouTube itself uh, does not pay you anything significant unless you have at least like 200,000 views. I mean, it's on average, it's like 500 USD for 100,000 views, uh, which is if you compare to our expenses in terms of camera gear uh, and, and stuff that we need to make is just nothing. Um, so what, what what you really need is people who want to offer you like a sponsorship and they, they pay pretty well. But then again, you know, you have these guys that spit out like two videos a week. So, you know, then you have a budget, but we're like once every four, six weeks. Um, so a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, you have no YouTube channel with uh, 46,000 subscribers in, a year, in just a year. Wow, you must be swimming in money. And we're like, no, no, <laughs> no. Not a couple all. extra zeros, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we we have all these these exciting ideas, and and uh, we are also saving money for some really cool projects. But it's 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 it, it's a long run, you know. It's just you need so much money for this stuff, and yeah, we just don't have a lot mm. of money. And as you say, as you say, because it's a hobby, you want to keep it fun. Exactly. And there's that there's that problem that if you if you push too hard on a hobby that ceases to become fun. Not only do you you lose your hobby because you're like I don't like that hobby anymore. That hobby is no longer fun, and it kind of and that's a really hard balance to fit. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, and we've had mo I've had moments. We all have had moments that we're like we're gonna quit. You know, when I when I dropped the hard drive, everyone like we were all like you know like, what why don't we just quit? But then we're like no, this is our dream. And, you know, we have a really loyal fan base because we have only gained subscribers while we haven't posted in five months and people are still waiting for our content. So we have a really loyal, yeah, really, really loyal fan base. And uh, I also feel obliged to them to just keep making cool content because. And do you, know, you in that, in that five, in that five months hiatus, are you communicating with them saying we're planning, we've got things and, you know, in motion, yeah, and, uh, you know, yeah, especially on our Patreon. We have a Patreon, which is really a loyal, dedicated group of uh, supporters. So we keep them up to date of everything that we do, that we are planning. Uh, we make photos when we're in the car, going to the next filming events, so you know, to keep them up to date. And on YouTube itself, we just posted, um, posted a, a message like, okay, we're going to be away for a few months. Uh, so if you don't see anything happening, you know, that's just the way it is. But we'll be back with awesome content. And everybody was fine. We we've only gained subscribers while we haven't posted. That's pretty. Uh, Fantastic. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Un unusual, I would say. In, yeah. In the in the algorithm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, exactly. But that's that's the positive side of being in a niche. Of course, you know, if you Google, I don't know, like sports review, there are thousands of channels that 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 cover sports, but there are very little channels that cover ancient history, let alone people that are actually reenacting it. Um, so that's why it's a really loyal fan base that actually literally tells us you are the only guys who are doing this. It's so awesome. We're not going to leave you behind, so to speak. So, mm. well, really... well I, I can't get my I can't get my fix anywhere else. So you guys are it. So <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. They're like history junkies, and we're their, <laughs> we're their yeah. drugs, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, have you been asked to do like little videos of Can you show us making a um, a piece of clothing? you know, the Torsberg trousers, can you show us making those? Can you show us making, you know, in a blacksmith, you know, how a blacksmith makes it and 
so that you sort of start to expand out the time. Like, you know, a modern dress blacksmith. I'm assuming he doesn't blacksmith in, in costume. Um, I mean, I mean, let's face it, top, you know, uh, you know, stripped to the waist. It's like, well, that looks the same modern or ancient. Um, but um, you know, that that kind of, you know, show you pounding the metal or show you doing those sorts of things to add incremental types of video. Is that something that you've thought about? Um, we have thought about it, but I think like um, making a Thor's back trousers is so specific that only a very tiny portion of our followers would be really interested because, you know, everybody knows who Julius Caesar was. Everybody knows that the Romans once occupied a large part of the world, but who knows what a Thor's back trousers is? I mean, that's like a really <laughs> small percentage of people. Uh, well, we so had an article about that Germanic warrior uh with the Thorsberg trousers only three issues ago. So, you know, that's uh, there's many thousands of people who know what it is. No, no, sure, sure. Make no mistake. <laughs> but still, that niche is also still a niche, you know. So for us, we really need to, we really need to focus on um, how much work will it be to make a video and how popular is it probably going to be. And for us, you know, how to make a Thorsberg trousers, it might be successful, but... It's it's for me. It's really difficult to um, to make up that balance with such an uh, such a top. So, so in the end, the the algorithm still rules all. Even if you even if you try to just do what you want to do, and yeah, yeah. it's. I mean, views are down for a lot of History Channel because YouTube is being quite frantic about anything that only hints towards violence, which is ridiculous because they'd rather have you look at something with you know like something like oh i bought new shoes great one million views but something yeah but something which of which you can actually learn something or which has your interest is being uh set aside because i mention oh the word war or conflict or uh, this should or, be I bought new color guy one million. I was going to say I bought new shoes. They happen to be Roman sandals. It's like you're buying into the buying into the algorithm. And you might rich. come up. <laughs> you might come up on the uh, you know on the on the feed. Look, on the okay, right side. you know you know high class <laughs> ones. Yeah, sure, we might yeah. try. We might try. All right. Um, last one, I think. What was the best thing that you found that you hadn't expected about making these videos? The the growth of the channel. Uh, our goal was to to hit 5,000 subscribers in 12 months, and we hit 43,000 in 12 months. Um, and Nearly 10 times as many, yeah. That's... Yeah, in a relatively short amount of time, working together with Invicta after we've just started. We're one of the biggest history channels on the planet. Um, we are now going into a partnership with Darius Arya, um, you know, people suddenly know where you are, who you are. Uh, I've been calling with 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 his favorite, at least for me, for us, famous historians who are contacting us like, yeah, sure, let's do something together. And I mean, that gives me so much energy, especially I don't know if you guys know Darius Aria. I think you do. Um, but, you know, I was in Rome and just gave him an Instagram message like, hey, man, I know you live in Rome. Uh, you might not have heard of us. Uh, I had a couple of wines, I must admit. And I said, if you want to <laughs> hang out, uh, let me know. And then he didn't send me anything back for like a day. And I thought, oh, you know, this man is so busy. You know, he has he has like 300,000 subscribers on, on Instagram. This man is busy. And then two days later, hi, Mark, sorry to come you so late. Yeah, I'm at uh, this and this place at 12. You want to have a coffee? And I was like, oh, man, I'm back in the Netherlands by this time. No, no. Um, but we, we, you know, we call each other up, and now we're going to make a, a series together, which is really cool. And that, those are the kind of things that really uh, gives us energy um, that we keep growing. And also, what really, really gave me a lot of energy and all the guys is um, the deal we have with with you guys with Ancient Warfare. I mean, to be able to to use your art is just one of the biggest pluses uh, that we could have hoped for because. Uh, it's so much work to find good artwork. First of all, it's all copyright. So if you find a good thing, you need to change it. And that's so much work. And you don't want to, to, to get something that somebody else has made. And now we have access to some superb high quality uh, artwork, which is just amazing. So that those kind of things is just what makes me really happy. Well, hopefully we'll, we're all very eager to see, I think, what the, what the new season will be like. 
So go see it at Imperium Romanum on YouTube. It's not very hard to find. Uh, assuming you know how to spell that one, but um, I think you, <laughs> I think I think we so, can, well, that's, our, our audience like, knows how to do that. It spells like it sounds, really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Last thing, um, Murray, um, you can help me with this. Yes. We happen to, to to know that we have a we have a copy of a paperback copy of uh, Mike Cole's Legion and Phalanx, I believe. And we need to get rid of it, don't we? We do, we do. Uh, so we would like uh, our loyal viewers to write uh, 25 words or less, one of those ones, uh, what they like best about Ancient Warfare. Um, magazine, not not Ancient Warfare, the field of study. Um, that That's would, interesting that would... to you. That, well, that, that, that is... Might, that is a... <laughs> if it's a really good one... <laughs> Might let okay. that through. All, all right. But, 25 words or less what you like best about Ancient Warfare, either the magazine or, indeed, the field of study, and uh, we will wing a copy of Mike's paperback. Where, where should you. people send that? Should we send it to awa at ancientwarfare.com? Might be handy. Uh, what he said. awa yes. at ancient-warfare.com. Yes. And if it's we a go. question, we'll just find it too and, and answer that in due course. Yeah, if you've, got a, if, if you've got a question, then we'll add that to the Ancient Warfare Answers and uh, we'll see if we can answer it. Yes. Several of those questions, of course, come through and we're like, oh, we don't know. I can't answer that. I can't. I can't say we don't know for 10 minutes. I'll just say we don't know. Anyway. But we do try. At least we Murray do. tries we mostly. Do. Yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. All right. Well, Mark, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, well, all the Marks, yeah. But I mean, we we know Mark, Mark the Santos knows that we're grateful for him joining us. But Mark Biermann is a little more special uh, for this one time. But maybe we'll see you back someday. Uh, I hope so. It was great. Uh, thank you for joining us. And um, we'll see everyone else very soon again. Bye-bye. <laughs>